going to trust you, God, and hold your hand and walk with you, God. I'm going to talk with you, God, and I'm going to let the whole entire world know that you are mine, God, that I belong to you, God. Help me to fend off temptation, God. Help me to fight off the, the temptation to say crazy stuff, to get involved in senseless conversations. Help me, God, not to be a person that builds up anger, but be a person that makes peace, that brings calm to a storm. Help me, God, to be a person that has the words and has the wisdom to know what to say and to know when to say it. Help me, God, to be a person that will grab somebody by the hand and lead them to you. Help me, God, to be a person that will lay hands on a sick person, that will lay hands on a person that's broken in need of deliverance. Help me, God, to know your word and have scripture when I need scripture. Help me, God, to be a person that doesn't lose hope myself. Help me, God, to be the calm one, the wise one, the strong one, the persevering one, the enduring one, the saved one, the one that calls on Jesus, the one that calls for prayer, the one that brings up the word of God, the one that walks in the light and not in the darkness, the one that looks up high, God, the one that looks to the hills for my help, for my help coming for the Lord. Help me to be that one, God. Help me to be the one that says I am more than the conqueror. Help me to be the one to speak peace. Help me the one to speak speak love. Help me to want to bring you into every and any situation, God. Don't let me be embarrassed. Don't let me be ashamed. Don't let me be ignorant. Don't let me feel less than. Don't let me get around people who have intelligence and PhDs and degrees and try to use that to whoop my behind, God. I'd rather love you with a GED, God. I'd rather love you with an eighth grade graduation, God. Then sit up here with all the intelligence in the world, but don't have you, don't speak for you, don't live for you, don't serve for you. I want to be the instrument of righteousness in your hand, God. So use us this morning. Use us in a mighty way in our families, God, in our communities, in our streets, God. Use us for ourselves. When we get down on ourselves, help us to encourage ourselves, God. Help us to draw to the cross. Help us to draw to the throne. Help us to go behind the veil. Help us to fall on our face. Help us to trust your word, God. Lean on you, God. Not on us. Lean on you. I'm asking for it now, God, because I made up my mind that I'm going to trust you. I made up my mind that I'm going to serve you. I made up my mind that my life is not my own. I made up my mind, Holy Father, that everything about me is for you. I made up my mind, Holy Father, that everything I have and everything I do, God, is for you. Forgive me for being so selfish. Forgive me for being so self-centered. Forgive me for always just thinking about me, myself, and I, my problems, my pain, my hurts, my confusion, my chaos, and my drama. I give that drama, that pain, that confusion, that chaos to you, God. And I set my mind on you so that I could walk in perfect peace, so I can talk in perfect peace, so I can live in perfect peace, so I can serve in perfect peace. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Now, God, somebody out here says, God, help me. Help me to be healed. Help me to be whole. Help me to be set free right now, God, as only you can. It is in the sweet name of our Savior and our Lord, our Redeemer, our Keeper, our Mind Regulator, and our Heart Fixer. Fix a heart today, God, as only you can. In Jesus' sweet, wonderful, powerful strong keeping of the land name we pray God we humble ourselves and turn from our wicked ways because we want to see our land healed today in Jesus name we pray amen amen and amen bless the powerful name of our Savior bless the powerful name of our Lord today boy oh boy I don't know who this word is going to be for but this was almost the word that wasn't so that means that God has something strong and powerful for somebody and I don't know who it's for but I hope it's you I hope that you brought somebody with you today that loves the Lord I hope that you brought somebody with you today that needs the Lord and so good morning to you ace good morning Tamala good morning Rashonda and Vera 
Morris. Good morning, Chriselle and Yvonne and Dangela. Good morning, all of you this morning. Are you ready to be charged with me? Are you ready to be built up with me? Are you ready to get what you didn't have before you came this morning? Good morning, Gigi and Karen and Shay. Mama Ida, good morning to you. Good morning, my beautiful sister Bertha. Good morning, Marlena. Good morning. Welcome home there so much. Good morning, Monica. Thank you so much, each and every one of you that are here. Good morning, Catherine. I'm so glad for your faithfulness. I bless God that all of you woke up this morning with your mind stayed on Jesus. Good morning, my sister Kiana. I want you to share this video with somebody. I want you to invite somebody because today is going to be a word that, um, how shall I say? This word may rub some people the wrong way, but that's okay. If we always rubbing people the right way, something wrong with our rub. Somebody say, I don't want something wrong with my rub. Every now and then when I come to you and I speak a word of God, it may rub you the wrong way. The word of God is a double-edged sword. One side of the word of God will comfort you. One side of the word of God will convict you and charge you. We have to take the word of God in its totality and in its wholeness. You and I can't just take the parts that we want. We can't just love the parts that feel good. Somebody say, don't rub me with a feel good. Rub me with a do good. Rub me with a live good. Rub me with a do right. Come on, somebody. I don't want to just feel good. Feel de good that got me in trouble enough times. I want to do good. I want to be good. I want to be a part of the good that God needs in the earth and in the land right now. So I don't know about you, but I'm ready. So welcome to each and every one of you watching on Facebook, to each and every one of you that is listening on the call. I praise God right now this morning for you. I thank him that he saw you. I thank him that he knew what you needed and he knew what you were going through. He knew the adversary that you are facing right now. Isn't it good to know that God knows our enemies? He knows our struggles. He, he knows where people are attacking us. He knows where people are doubting our faith. He knows where people are trying to discourage us from walking in faith. So he brought us a word today from the Gospel of Matthew. And it starts for us this morning. Uh, let's see. God is going to start us right here. Hold on. My screen it went down. He's going to start us right here in verse 47. Verse 47. And um, this is when Jesus was being portrayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. And and it, it's this is about him being with his disciples. And this is when his arresters, they came to get him. It says in verse 47, it says, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples. Oh, come on, devil. You ain't going to get no victory right here. Y'all come on. Hold on. We got to make a little adjustment here. That's all right. The enemy gets no victory right now. Come on, somebody. Hold on, I got to make a little adjustment. There we go. All right. It says here, even as in verse 47, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the 12 disciples arrived and a, with a crowd of men and with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priest and heirs, the men of God, the men of God. You hear that? They had been sent by the leading priest and the elders of the people. The traitor Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. So Judas came straight to Jesus. Greetings, Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him a kiss, gave him a kiss. We're in Matthew 26, picking up now at verse 50. Jesus said, my friend, go ahead and do what you have come for. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out his sword and struck the high priest slave, slashing off his ear. One of the men with Jesus, so filled with emotion, so filled with anger, so filled with indignation as to what was going on, pulled out his sword and cut off the man's ear. And listen to the words of Jesus, put away your sword. Jesus told him, those who use the sword will die by the sword. You live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Don't you realize that I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them instantly. But if I did, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must 
happen now. Listen to God. God said to Peter after Peter then cut off his the man's ear, the servant of the man who came. So this man was just on his job, just doing what the, the, the enemy that came for Jesus had asked him to do. He was a servant of the high priest. Jesus told him after Peter cut off his ear, he said, put away your sword. If you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. God came to give us a word this morning that in the midst of all we're going through, in the midst of all that's facing us, in the midst of all the temptation you and have, it, I, I have to get involved in everything and every conversation and every conflict. And yes, let's go out in the street and, and rumble and fight and argue with people on the job and be on the bus stop and be on the bus and be in the cab and call the Uber and argue with everybody. God says time for you and I to put away your sword. Today's devotion is put away your sword. I want you to know that there have been and there always will be times when our emotions run on a hundred. Time when our emotions are all over the place. It, it could be time of conflict in your family. It could be time of despair in your life. It could be anything. But what I declare to you right now is that God says to you and I right now in the name of Jesus, he said, despite what comes to stir up your emotions, whether it's something in your spiritual life, whether it's something in your physical life, whether it's something in your financial life, whether it's something in your political life, God said, it doesn't matter what it is. You have to know how to stay calm. You have to know how to not get involved. You have to know how to not let your flesh drive you, but you got to drive your flesh. If we were to say, well, I'm only human and you you know, I should be able to blow up and I should be able to, you know, blow off some of this steam any way that I see fit. Then we are of all men to be pity and we ought to be careful of the trouble that's going to come our way because we come to the thing pulling out our sword, our physical sword instead of the sword of the word of God. God says to us, put away your sword. Put away that weapon that says to you, they cussing at me, let them let me cuss at them. They fight me, let me fight them. They turning their back on me, let me turn they, my back on them. You know what? I, I feel like they getting blown up and so I'm going to get blown up too. And you know what? I'm going to bust them up. I'm going to fire on them. They fired on me. We always want to give somebody what they gave us. We always want to be driven by our emotions. But the end thereof, that route is destruction. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, Lord, help me to calm down. Help me to calm down. Anybody I, anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm not talking to you guys out there with the sweet spirit. I'm not talking to you guys out there who always remain calm. I, I'm not talking to you guys out there who never have a problem with any of it. I'm talking to you who literally, it doesn't take much from you to go from two to a hundred. It, it doesn't take much for you to literally be right in the thick of things. It, it doesn't take much for you to one minute be quoting Bible scriptures and the next minute you cussing somebody out. It doesn't take much. Is anybody saying that's me, Lord? But help me to calm down. Anybody know what I'm feeling and what I'm talking about this morning? It is blowing me away. You know, in the first few days after the election, it blew me away. The anger that I saw, the despair that I saw, the depression that I saw, the brokenness that I saw. I understood it, but I also understood that we couldn't give into it. The Bible says that as a man thinketh, so is he. As a man think of, so is he. So when I want to change who you are, I must change how you think. Come on, Holy Ghost, speak this word this morning. When I want to change who you are, I must change how you think. So if I come upon you in your life and you say to me, Pastor Don, I'm feeling mighty suicidal because, you know, my life is a hot mess. I don't have a reason to live. And so I might as well just give up and give up now. When you make that decision, that that's the decision of your life, then my job, when I come upon you with that mindset, when I come upon you in that thinking, I'm not to say, girl, you right. It's so bad. You know what? Go on ahead. What you need me to do? You need me to put the bullets in the gun. You need me to give you the pills. What you need me to do? Tie the noose and move the chair what do you need me to do go on ahead and push the car off the cliff what you and I cannot buy into something just because people say that that's how they're feeling the call on our lives the call on our salvation the pull on our anointing is that you and I operate in the power of God in the servanthood of God you and I constantly say that God said blessed are the peacemakers I come on the scene as a peacemaker now that's not popular today that's not popular 
today. Come on, Holy Spirit. The, the enemy today wants to push the buttons of the redeemed. The enemy today wants the redeemed of the Lord to come to a situation and not calm it down, but stir it up. Understand that every conflict you will come to. I don't care if you're at a fish fry. I don't care if you're at church. I don't care if you're at a protest. Every conflict that you come to as the redeemed of the Lord, you come to that conflict with one or two buckets. You come with a bucket of water ready to put the fire out or you come to the conflict with a bucket of gasoline ready to stir it up which bucket are you known for carrying come on somebody somebody say help me calm down are you the one that comes to the situation with a bucket of water you always have a word of God you always have a calm of God you always have faith in God you always say you know what I don't understand this and this does not make sense to me how so never I trust God I walk with God you're never going to get me to doubt God I know too much about him you can't make me doubt him so I say to you be angry and sin not I say to you today I know you looking at your sword I, I know you loading up your sword I know you're getting your sword ready but I declare to you right now that the Holy Ghost brought you here today to tell you put away your sword put away your sword can't you see Jesus and the disciples sitting there in the garden of Gethsemane and here Jesus is at a prayer meeting. It's just a prayer meeting. It's a prayer meeting and a, and a slumber party. He didn't want them to slumber, but here they were sleepy and here Jesus is praying and here he is about to go to the cross knowing that this is the destination. This is the destiny of his very physical life. And he says to them, you know, sleep, don't sleep with me. He said, pray with me. He said, I know, I know that your, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Come on, we can't give in to weak flesh weak flesh will make you and I go crazy this is what happened to Peter when the arresters when the torturers of Jesus came in the garden and Judas himself came in the garden all of a sudden Peter pulls out his sword and cuts off the ear the Bible says of a servant this was not one of the other soldiers. This was not one of the high priests. He cuts out somebody who was there by orders. Don't you know sometimes that if you and I go into a crowd and we just going to pop off in the crowd, we just going to blow up in the crowd, we just going to shoot off in the crowd. It's the innocent bystander that gets hurt. It's the innocent bystander that gets shot. You know, you can have a gangbanger see one of his enemies in a parking on a basketball court. He decides he's going to do a drive by, go by the basketball court he's aiming for his enemy he sees his rival game and he decides that he's gonna shoot while the car is in motion he's so filled with adrenaline so filled with anger because he has to strike back he has to pull out his sword and use it but when he aims for the enemy is it his target that gets hit no it's the six-year-old climbing on the monkey bars it's the 10-year-old swinging on the swings it's the four-year-old coming down the slide it's the mother pushing the stroller it's the innocent bystander that gets her so no you and I can't give into emotion because when we blow up it's not controllable when we push out it's not controllable bullets fly and have no name on it I'm telling you right now God said put away your sword put away your sword I know you want to get involved. I know you want to be angry. I know you want to stir up but come to the conflict either with a bucket of gasoline or with a bucket of water are you going to put the fire out are you going to stir it up? I read so many posts on yesterday and so many people saying, I don't want to hear about this God thing. I, I, I heard people saying, I don't want to know about the, I don't want you coming to me with scriptures that you're misquoting and redirecting. And I heard people saying, you know, I know about the providence of God and I know about the power of God, but right now I'm angry and give me a moment to process my anger. I can let you process your anger, but I need to tell you in the midst of processing your anger, put away your sword. Be careful, child of God out there, what you post. You can't post anything because what you're feeling, what you post is these are my emotions and you just typing away. And you, like I told you the other day, you just this greatest Facebook cyber thug there is. You just this Instagram gangster. You know, you just this Snapchat gangbanger, but you have just become your fingers are typing and you are a lethal weapon. And so you type in every thought that's in your head and every thought that's in your heart and everything you would do and everything you want to do and everything you would say. This preacher actually put on Facebook that they were at a protest and wanted to join in with the protesters who were saying F 
Donald Trump. Now they, they typed it out, F comma comma K, Donald Trump. Now we are in trouble when preachers, we are in trouble when pastors and elders, we are in trouble when the saved say, I'm going to join the protest and carry my sign and I'm going to be with everybody else and I'm going to throw gasoline on the fire. You saying F Donald Trump, I'm saying F Donald Trump. You feel like F and Donald Trump up, I'm saying F Donald Trump up. See, I can come with gasoline and stir you up and then I can fall back and say those were my emotions. That's what I was feeling. That's what I was thinking. But unfortunately, what I think can become your actions. My thoughts can become your actions. I can be the one to push you to go get a gun. I can be the one to push you and go do something crazy. I can be the one to get you out there starting fires and flipping up cars. What if all of a sudden Donald Trump supporters meet the Clinton supporters all in the street? And then next thing you know, we have civil war. We have civil war. Why? Because the redeemed of the Lord was out there marching with everybody else. The redeemed of the Lord was pouring gasoline instead of pouring water. God says, put away your sword. Put away your sword, put away your sword, put away your sword. I know you emotional. I know you disappointed, but I want you to understand that our election is legal. Donald Trump was elected by our legal process. You want to protest something? Protest the process. You don't like the electoral college vote? Then say, you know what? Let me go and protest how to get this system pulled down. If you believe that the president should be chosen by the one that gets the most votes, the one that wins the popular vote, then go and do what you have to do in our justice system. You out here stopping traffic. It changes nothing. You out here making in billboards it changes nothing you burning flags it, the man is still going to be president he was elected by legal means when we protest when we get to the place where we think we ought to protest stuff that was legal come on somebody and I'm not saying everything legal is right but what I'm saying to you is we are either going to be a part of the problem or we're going to be a part of the solution and I believe in my heart and my soul we're supposed to be a part of the solution we either coming with a bucket of water or we're coming with a bucket of gasoline. You and I have a call to prayer. You and I have a call to righteousness. God is in control and I'm never going to let somebody guilt me or shame me for saying that. I'm never going to say God is in control, but never going to put a but on the end of it. It's God is in control, period. God is in control, period. Now, listen to our scripture here. When we, we were here in the 26th chapter of Matthew, it says here that the leading high priest and the elders of the people were the one who came with the crowd with the swords in the club. Just because you hear a pastor, just because you hear a priest, just because you hear an elder, just because you hear a bishop espousing their emotion doesn't make it right. Don't you know that there was a crowd of people that was what? Protesting Jesus all the way to the garden. I'm right with you. I got my club. I got my sword. Let's go get that prophet. Let's go get the person that's opening up blinded eyes. Let's go get that person that brought Lazarus back from the death. Let's go get the person that raised up Jairus' daughter. Let's go get the person that walked out on the storm and told the winds and the wave to be still. Let's go get this maniac. You know what? I see a crowd. I want to be a part of the crowd. They saying crucify him. You know what? I'm going to say crucify him. Come on, somebody, put away your sword. Put away your sword. I don't care who it is that is espousing the, the, the emotion, who is espousing the hatred, who is espousing the anger. You pick up your Bible. You put That's the sword that you pick up. You pick up the word of God and say, what does the word of God tell me about this time? Now, I'm with you. If Donald Trump gets in office and we begin to see him doing things that are not just, we begin to see him doing things that are illegal you and I have every right and we have every motivation to now go and protest what the man has done but all he was was elected and elected in a country that chose a system you cannot protest the system unless you're ready to change the system Come on, somebody. You're not going to, you do you think they're just going to go and say, you know what? Let's vote again. 
you know what we see that the people are upset we see that they cussing all over facebook did you read bishop so-and-so's post i say you know what take him down and put hillary up i trust god i trust god whether pharaoh is in charge or moses is in charge i trust God, and I'm never going to be ashamed to say it. I'm never going to be ashamed to hold about it. It's not a, I trust God, but he need my help. I trust God, but he needs me to do this. I just singly and solely and with all my heart, all my soul and all my mind, trust God. Pick up your word and get some discernment about the power of hope, about the power of light. You and I are either going to be a part of the problem or we're going to be a part of the solution. This is our move, whether we're talking about political confusion or whether we're talking about chaos in the family. If, if you at Thanksgiving dinner and all hell break loose between two of your uncles, you are the peacemaker in the house. You, you see two of your sisters starting to argue. You are the peacemaker. You on the job and two of your coworkers are going at it. You are the peacemaker on the scene and it's your job. It is your responsibility. It is your post to say, put away your sword. If you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. Put away your sword. Put away your sword. And when you see people talking about, don't I don't want to hear all that God stuff right now. I'm not trying to, you know, front with that. I'm not trying to walk with that. I'm not trying to rock with that. Say, what you rocking with then? What are you rocking with? Because if you're not rocking with God, choose ye this day. No man can serve two masters. Either I'm going to rock with God 365 days a year, 24 hours a day in good times and bad. I don't get to say, well, you know what? I don't like what's going on, so I'm not rocking with God right now. I'm going to take off my salvation. I'm going to take off my new man. Right now, I feel like I need to put my old man back on because my old man feel like going F Donald Trump. Really? Really? Come on, somebody. Don't be afraid of the people. If you just start yielding your gun, yielding your words, and yielding your anger, just like Peter, you're going to cut off the ear of an innocent bystander. But thanks be to God that the moment that Peter cut off that ear, Jesus was still while being beaten. Jesus was still while being taken into custody. Jesus was still a healer. Jesus healed the man's ear. The Bible says he touched the man's ear and restored his ear back to hold him. God is going to touch our land if his people who are called by his name will humble themselves. Anybody know what it means for us to humble ourselves? Not blow up, not get angry, not burn up buildings and burn up businesses not be out here stopping traffic and inciting violence, not be up here pouring gasoline on people who don't have your God. Let me stop and pause right there. When you pour gasoline on the situation, you're pouring gasoline on people who don't have as much word as you do. So it's kind of like the person that goes in the forest fire and they just went in with a cigarette and they flick one little cigarette butt and they think, what can this one, one little cigarette butt can set thousands and thousands and millions of acres on fire. Don't walk into the forest right now with a cigarette butt because you know what, you're going to church Sunday and so you're going to calm down on Sunday. You know what, you got a Bible at home so you know, you're going to go home and read your Bible. You know what, you watch Joyce Myers and T.D. Jakes and Rod Parsley and Benny Hinn and you know what, TBN and the Word Network, those are your favorite channels. You always listening to Tamla Mann and, 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 and Juanita Bynum. You, you know what, you love you some Word of God. You know what, you'll go on a fast to calm yourself down. But what about the people who you flick your cigarette butt at? The people who you flick the cigarette but are a raging inferno because you got in the mix and stirred them up. Be angry and sin not. Put away your sword, whether in a personal situation, a public situation, a spiritual situation, a physical situation, or a political situation. Put away your sword. Don't change your word this weekend. Don't change your word this weekend. Stand on it. These are the promises of God that he is Alpha 
and Omega. I don't have to understand the middle because I serve Omega. I don't even have to understand the beginning because I serve Alpha. I'm telling you, my God is able. And when I think that without me raising up hell, that nothing's going to be done, then I doubt my God. Don't you know that Jesus said in his word, listen to this, and I'm going to close with this. He says in verse 53 of our keep scripture here in Matthew 26, he says to Peter and the disciples, don't you realize that I could have asked my father for thousands of angels to protect us and he would send them instantly? Don't y'all know that if God didn't want Donald Trump to be president, he would not be president. And if God wanted to take him down, and if God does take him down, let God do it. Understand, and I said this to somebody the other day, and I mean this with the peace of God in my heart. Donald Trump may never sit in the inaugural office. Donald Trump may never lay his hand on the Bible and take oath. Donald Trump may never make it to January 20th, but that's of God's doing. God could stop Donald Trump's heartbeat, his breath. Donald Trump could be paralyzed and somebody could be changing his diaper by the new year. Leave it to God. God says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Vengeance is mine. If you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. And who knows, Mike Pence might become the president. Donald Trump may serve one year, two years, four years. I don't know what it is. I don't know the plan, but that's why I declare that I walk by faith and not by sight. I trust my God and there is no but. There is no conjunction attached to it whatsoever. I trust my God, period, period. That's how I feel and that's what I believe. He said in the final verse, verse 54, but if I did, he said, if he did call those angels down to stop what was being done, he said, how would the scriptures be fulfilled that describe what must happen? Donald Trump had to happen. Donald Trump had to come and shake us up. Donald Trump, I believe with all my heart and my soul is not going to bring judgment. I believe Donald Trump is a judgment on America. We want to turn our head and act like we didn't do anything. We want to turn our head and act like we just been so innocent. And, and you know, we just been having church, but we haven't had a nation that has turned her back on God. We haven't had a nation that has said that God does not matter. We doesn't, haven't had a nation that has taken God out of everything. We don't even want what God created. God created marriage, not man, not woman. We don't even want what God said it is. We don't even want it to stay that. We want to redefine God. But what if Donald Trump is the judgment that America needed to let you know why we were sitting up here changing marriage, redefining marriage, why we were here celebrating, you know, Bruce Jenner and everybody wants to call him Caitlyn. He ain't Caitlyn. He Bruce Jenner. But we wanted to call him Caitlyn. We celebrating the fact that this man went and had some breasts sold to his chest and had a dress put on him and we giving him awards and the whole world is putting him on the front of magazines and uh, applauding him and the whole world is saying that a man who believes believes that he is a woman should be able to walk in the trion room, the fitting room and walk in the bathroom with my little girl and your little girl and my granddaughter and your granddaughter. We want to say that it's okay to do anything and everything. And we actually think that God is never going to say that enough is enough. Donald Trump is the judgment on America. And just like God used kings, just like God used enemy nations, just like God used the king of Babylon to whoop his people, to whoop his people's tail, he will use Donald Trump until America goes back and turns back to God. We say we one nation under God, but only when we want to be. Let it become a mass shooting. Oh, we one nation under God. Let a school get shot up. Then we're one nation under God. Let something happen. A tsunami happens. An earthquake happens. We want to fall. Can we have a day of prayer? Can we have a candlelight vigil? Let me tell you something. That's how we ought to act. We ought to act like there's 
been a mass shooting. We ought to act like there's been a mass murder. We ought to be calling for candlelight vigils. We ought to be calling for a day of prayer. We ought to be out there doing what the redeemed of the Lord said because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And when we get out here and get involved in civilian affairs and start fighting this fight, fighting the decoy, fighting each other, God did not call us to civil war. God called us to fight the good fight of faith. God said, you do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness. And we out here fighting each other. Put away your sword. Put away your sword. I love it the way my brother Clement Neely in Nassau, Bahamas said. Clement and I were on the phone and he said to me day before yesterday, he said, sister, he said, let me tell you something. He said, I have a home for you here in Nassau and, and you can come and live with me. You don't have to stay in America. You can come here and live with me because it seems like it's about to get crazy. I said, Clement, I'm not going nowhere. The fact that America is going crazy. Listen to our key scripture again, because I want to make sure that everybody get it. He said, this is what must happen. This is prophetic. This is prophecy. What the scripture said would happen is happening. And I said, this is when I roll up my sleeves. This is when I get down in the dirt. This is when I go hard after the loss. This is when I make sure that the redeemed of the Lord say so. This is when I become a light set up on top of the hill. This is when I speak as if God himself is speaking through me. This is when I say, this world is not my home. This is when I say, I am an ambassador for Christ. This is when I go into all the world to make disciples of everybody I meet in my Judea, in my Jerusalem, in Samaria, in the uttermost parts of the world. Because believe me, that in times like this, people are looking for a rock. People are looking for a savior. People need something that's not changing. People need something that's not shifted. Turn them to the rock. Turn them to your Lord and to your salvation. Turn them to your God. I'm not leaving America. I'm about to try to save America. I'm about to try to evangelize America. I'm about to let make, make sure that everybody I know knows that the gospel is real, that the gospel is a lie. But what I need to tell Christians, this today, help me, Holy Ghost, this word right now was not an evangelistic word because I'm not trying to save you. I'm trying to tell you to put away your sword. Put away your sword. Pick up your Bible. Get on your witness and do what God has always called for his people to do. Lean not on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. Acknowledge him in all your ways. You don't get to say, I'm at the protest. I'm not going to acknowledge God now because now my language is going to be F this and this, that, and the other. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Acknowledge him in all your ways. What you don't understand, what you don't feel, what you are emotionally upset about, give it to God. But put away your sword. There needs to be a call of repentance, starting with the church. Help me, Holy Ghost. Starting with the church. It needs to start with the church. The church needs to say, we left our God. We left our post. We came off our wall. In the book of Ezekiel, I was reading this in my personal devotion today, and I wanted to read you guys just this one scripture and it's this story about these two sisters these two sisters that are symbolic of the nation of Israel that committed adultery and and took after themselves you know idols and and slept with all these people and did all of these different things and and God is saying how he's gonna stir up he said I, he said to the sisters I'm gonna stir up your lovers against you those you turned away from and disgust I will bring them against you from every side God said, I will direct my jealous anger against you and deal with you in fury. He says to them, this is what you did. He says, I am about to deliver you into the hands of those you hate to those you turned away from in disgust. They will deal with you in hatred and take away everything you work for. And they will leave you stark naked and the shame of your prostitution will be exposed. Good God almighty Help me, God. And this is the key verse I want to leave you with. Ezekiel 23, verse 35. It says, the sovereign Lord says, since you have forgotten me and turned your back on me, you must bear the consequences of your lewdness and your prostitution. America has become a prostitute. America, a nation that our founding fathers who loved our Lord and our God, founded on the principles of God, we are stripping God out of the country 
that he set his believers here to find to the point where we don't want God in anything. And because of our prostitution and be because of our lewdness, I want you to understand because we've forgotten God and turned our back on him. Listen to what he said again. You must bear the consequences. I don't know about you, but I want God to have mercy on us. I want the grace of God to embrace this nation. And I want to see us go back to remembering our God and turn him back to our God. I want as many as I can. If God decides to break open the sky tonight, I want to get as many as I can tonight into the kingdom. But until then, I want the redeemed of the Lord to help me. So put away your sword. This is what scripture said what happened. These are the last days when people wouldn't endure the truth. They would turn aside to miss, to follow what their itching ears wanted to hear. Now, I know this is not a popular word. I know that people would rather I get you jumping over pews and, and dancing in the aisles, but maybe we've done too much dancing and not enough delivering. Maybe we did too much shouting and not enough shifting. Maybe we were so busy seeking the hand of God, we forgot to seek the face of God. Maybe we were so filled with who hurt us and who talked about us and who ran our name down that we didn't even fight against the people who were running down the name of our God, the people that were hurting our God, the people who said that he was unnecessary. I want you to get this 23rd chapter of Ezekiel, especially that 35th verse in your heart today. I want you to get Matthew chapter 26 that I read you earlier today. Put away your sword. You don't have to fight everybody that wants to fight you. You don't have to fight everybody that wants to fight somebody else. If God wanted to stop what was going on, he would call his angels, thousands, legions of them, and it would stop in a blink of an eye. I declare to you right now by the spirit of the living God that our God is in control, that he absolutely will not be mocked. I trust him. I love him. And you know what? I believe him. I believe him. Because what did we say? I know who he is. I know what he can do. I know where he is. And I know who he is. So I am at peace. Don't listen to every bishop, every pastor, every elder, every campus pastor. You have got to follow the word of the God that you say you serve and belong to. Let the children of God speak up now. Just because they're saying crucify him doesn't mean we have to join in. Let's go back to saying Hosanna. 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 Put away your sword. Put away your sword. Put away your sword. Put away your sword. Share this message today. We share everything that everybody's saying on Facebook that's crazy. Everything that everybody's saying that's, that's gasoline. I dare you to share this bucket of water today. And whoever don't like it, believe me, I'm a big girl. I can take it. Y'all know I don't care who inbox me. I don't care who write me. I'm all right because I know my Redeemer yet lives. There's a hedge of protection around my life and the devil can't get through it. He can't get over it. He can't get around. So don't y'all worry about me because I'm in the hands of the Lord. And so are you as we get out there and we do what our Savior told us to do. My brother down in Alabama, in Dothan, Alabama, my brother Richard Holman, he made a mighty post that I just love. It was so short. Yet it was simple and I loved it and I put it on my page and I want you all to hear it. He put on on his page on Wednesday. He said me. This is what he is saying. God, how could America choose an unqualified, inexperienced, problematic person to do a great work? And then he put God. This is what God says. I do it all the time. Then he said, this is me. I have nothing to say. God uses unqualified, inexperienced, problematic people all the time to do a good work. 
and you're looking at one. You're looking at one. I am Donald Trump. I, I, sin is sin. I've made sins. I've made mistakes. I've said things. But God used me. And if God could use a foolish thing like me, why can't he use Donald Trump? I'm praying that the anointing that breaks yokes, I'm praying that anointing fall on Donald Trump's head, on his life and on his soul. Won't you join me in not persecuting him, but praying for him? Do you believe that prayer works? Then pray for him. Saul became Paul. Dawn became me. You became you. God does it all the time. Use unexperienced, inexperienced, unqualified, problematic, bigoted people. What if everything you ever said was put it on put on the front paper? What if every joke you ever told, every picture you ever looked at, every pornographic image you ever shared, what if that was shared with the public? I don't think you would seem like you were qualified to be president either. I know I wouldn't. Thank God my private stuff is private and repented for. Thank you, Jesus. We saw his stuff, his bones, his dirt, but God can use them. So put away your sword. Father God, you know you are good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. We trust you, God. We believe you, God. And yes, it hurts. And yes, we don't understand. And and, and yes, our candidate didn't win. But God, we trust our process. We trust the process that a man was legally, not illegally, a man was legally chosen to be president. And no, many of us don't agree with it, but it was legal. Now, when he does something unjust, then we will march. When he does something illegal, then we will protest. When he does something, but God, there is no injustice yet. The legal system in place in the country you placed us in has been followed and fulfilled. And God, we trust you. And when you tell us that this is wrong, speak out on that wrong. When you tell us, God, that this is an injustice and he can't make this law and he can't do this and he can't. Then, God, we will do everything you tell us to do as we always have for century upon century. But we're not just going to march to march. We're not just going to come to the problem with a bucket of gasoline. We're coming with water. And we're going to tell every brother and every sister we have to put away your sword. God is in control, period. Not comma, not and, not but. Just period. We love you, God. We believe you, God. And we lift our hands to you right now. Every worshiper right now. Every believer and every praiser. Every servant. We repent right now, God, for the sins of America. We repent for calling wrong right. We repent for allowing wrong to be made into law. We repent for the hatred, the bigotry. We repent for the wickedness and the evil. We repent for turning the other cheek and saying absolutely nothing. We didn't protest when wickedness was abounding. We didn't protest when evil was taking place in the White House. We didn't repent and we didn't do any of that then. So God, we repent now. We turn from our wicked ways now and we put away our sword now. I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I trust you, God. I trust you, God. That's all I need. Even when the pain in my life makes you seem so far away. I trust you not just in my political life, but in my physical life. Somebody is warring in the physical God and they trust in you. Somebody is warring in their marriage. They can't even focus on the election. They can't even focus on the news because all hell is breaking loose at home. And God, we're going to put away our sword. We're not going to pull out our sword on our spouse. We're not going to pull out our sword on our children and on our neighbors and on our friends. We're going to put away our sword because we trust you, God. Even though everything that I see tells me not to believe. My trust is in you, God. My trust is in you, God. From everlasting to everlasting. When I lose my spouse and I lose my house and I lose my job, I trust you, God. 
I can only trust you because nobody loves me like you do. So many painful thoughts, God, travel through my mind, God, Jesus. And I wonder how, Jesus, if I'm going to make it through this time, but I trust you. Lord, it's not easy. It's not easy. Sometimes the pain in my life makes you seem far away, God. What I saw on the news, what I saw after the election, is wasn't what I thought. But I trust you, God, period. Through the tears and the pain, through the fears and the heartache and the rain, God, even if I had to cry, even if I have to go through chemo, even if I have to be in this wheelchair, even if I have to write this obituary, even if I have to pick out this casket, even if I have to go through this surgery, God, even if I have to stay by myself or get this divorce, I trust you, God, because I can and I will, God. Now I'm going to go out in the world and I'm going to bring my bucket of trust to every protest. I'm going to bring my bucket of trust to every post on social media. I'm going to bring my bucket of water, God, and put out the fire. I'm not going to wait until it becomes an inferno. I'm going to see smoke and I'm going to pour my bucket of trust on it because I'm going to declare that I will. I trust you, God. Hallelujah, God. I don't know, God, what's going to happen. I don't know when the pain is going to end. I don't know if Trump is going to be great or if Trump is going to be grueling. I don't know if he's going to be good or he's going to be bad. But I trust you, God. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. I trust you, God. 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 I pray for the land I live in, the world I live in, the country I live in, God. I pray for my government. I pray for my president going out and my president going in. I pray for him right now, God. And on behalf of everything we've done to turn our back on you, the way we forgot you, the way we didn't lift you up, God, we repent right now in the name of Jesus. We repent, God, for our wrong, and we commit to your right, God, because we're going to put away our sword and declare to the world that we trust you, God. In a darkest day, in a darkest hour, in the darkest valley, I will, I will, I will know that you're going to make a way. With Donald Trump, through Donald Trump, despite Donald Trump. God, you will, you will, you will, you will, you will make a way. And I just simply trust you and believe you. I love you and I won't doubt you. God will make a way. So I'm going to put away my sword. In the name of Jesus, I believe. I'm at peace. <laughs> And I trust my God. Amen. Amen. And amen. What a mighty God you and I serve. What a mighty God you and I serve. God will make a way. Don't you doubt him. He, you know too much about him. He's been too good to you and I. And the Lord has brought us a mighty long way. I want you to go and have an amazing weekend. Be powerfully used. Take your bucket of light, your bucket of love, your bucket of calm, your bucket of trust, your bucket of word, your bucket of promise, your bucket of Holy Ghost. Take it to every post, every Instagram, every Snapchat, every Facebook, every meeting, every cubicle, every church meeting, every sideline conversation, every text. Bring your bucket of God and put away your sword. I love you, Fire Family. Won't you share this message? If this ministry keeps blessing you, bless it. It is your love and your faithfulness saying, God is blessing me here in this ministry. And because he is, I'm going to bless this ministry. Go to the hopeone.com. Sow a seed. Many of you listen every day. You learn every day. You're blessed every day. And you have never blessed the ministry. If the ministry blesses you, if it feeds you, won't you feed it? 
Come on, somebody, sow a seed today. Be faithful to God as he has been faithful to you. I love you today. I thank you today. Today was supposed to be my day off. Y'all know I've been here every day. Now, y'all know I don't normally do the broadcast five days, but it's been that kind of week. God said this was a five day a week kind of week, and we needed a live word. And so I thank the Lord for bringing his word through this channel, through this call, on this line. We faced all kind of difficulties this week, and God in his faithfulness has still encouraged, equipped, and built up his people. I pray that if you don't have a church home and you're in the Los Angeles area, meet us at the Hope, the Hope Church in Inglewood, California. You'll see it on our website. Somebody will put the address on the screen for me. We would love to worship with you. This kind of teaching and preaching goes on at the Hope every Sunday. If you want to be a part of a ministry that is dynamic and changing the world and saving the souls, if you want to be a part of the ministry that stays on the wall of God and continues to be about our Father's business, we would love to have you at the Hope Church. Those of you in other cities, those of you in other countries and other states, Go to church this weekend, a Bible-believing, God-loving, God-worshiping, Jesus-praising, truth-telling church. Go somewhere where the truth is told so that you can be set free. Don't go to get chill bumps. Don't go to have a good time. Go to worship God and be trained and equipped. And whatever wrong is in your life, want conviction want change, want a mirror to be held up to your life so that you can stand before God one day and hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Don't go to a church where somebody is encouraging you to live in a way that you don't even look at yourself because I know you don't want to stand before God one day and hear him say, depart from me. I never knew you. Continue to lift up Mama Lou. Continue to lift up Mama Betty and family. Continue to lift up all of the prayer requests that you see on the screen, that you've heard on the line. It's a lot going on in the world, but the prayers of the righteous continue to avail much. I love you. I'm going to meet you back here. Those of you that listen to Sunday School, don't forget, you can call in every Sunday morning, 830 West Coast time, and listen to our Sunday School lesson. So if you need Sunday School on Sunday mornings, listen this Sunday. Listen every Sunday. If I don't see you at church, can't see you at church because you're clean in Iran right now. You're clean in Italy or France or, or Africa right now. If you're all the way in Miami or St. Louis right now, then I'm going to meet you back here on Monday morning. I love you so much, and I just encourage you, please, remember what I told you yesterday. Hit a whole bunch of likes, 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 likes. Remember, that's how this whole Facebook Live thing works. The more you like this video, the more likes you give it, the more notice that Facebook gives to it, and they continue to push it up on the news feeds of people all over the Internet so that they can see this is a message that a whole lot of people in the world were paying attention to. So like it, like it, like it, love it, love it, love it, share it, share it, share it. This message will be playing on um, our 24-hour playback line or just keep coming back to the page to watch it a million times if you need it. If you love God, come on and be a testament. I need you to just put for me one good time. I love God. I love God and I'm going to put away my sword. 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 If this was a blessing to you, can you just put that on the screen for me? I'm going to put away my sword. I'm going to put away my sword. I just need to know that this message blessed you today. Come on, type it on the screen for me so that I know this message made a difference for you. I'm even going to give the people on the call. I'm going to give you just a few good seconds to come off a of mute and let the world know that you're going to put away your sword too. I know we over time, but I'm going to give y'all just two good minutes to come and say, I'm putting away my sword. Good morning to you if you're here and you're on the call. If you're on the call and or Facebook, you type it on the screen. And Glenisha, I see you. We're praying for your auntie um, who had a heart attack yesterday. We are praying for her. Her name is Yolanda Nettles, prayer warriors. Come on, y'all cover Yolanda Nettles and let Lanisha know you heard her request. Good, good morning. Anybody here on the call that wants to just say, I'm going to put away my sword. Good morning to you. Good morning. All right. I just wanted to give everybody a chance. Hey, nobody's there. That's all right, too. I just wanted to make sure that everybody had an opportunity because I believe and trust my God. I hope you do, too. 
Know that God will make a way. He will make a way. He will make a way. I love you and I'll see you on Monday morning. Have a great week. Hope family bring somebody to church with you. Mama Ida, I hope I see you on Sunday. I missed you on last Sunday. I want to see some of you who have never had a chance to come. You always write me, always inbox me, telling me you're coming to the Hope. If you're in the Inglewood, L.A., Long Beach, Las Vegas area, I don't care where you are, make it to the Hope if you can. I would love to wrap my arms around you and worship God with you. I love you so much and I bless God for you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your covering. Thank you for your support for my family and for the family of faith around the globe. Everybody have an amazing week, an amazing, amazing, incredible week. And guess what? I'm going to finish the way I started, that God is going to make a way. And I trust him. I trust him. Don't you trust him? Don't you trust him? Hmm. I hope you do. I love you. And I will meet you here or at the Hope Sunday or Monday morning. Love you. I love you, Papa Mike. Papa Mike said him and Mama Ida are going to be in the house. Allah said I'm in Idaho. All right, Idaho is in the, is it Ella or Isla? Allah? I don't know which one it is, but all right, we sending our love to Idaho. Bless the Lord. Thank you so much. The service starts, Gigi, at 2 o'clock. I would love to see you there. It's casual. It's interactive. What does that mean? You actually get to ask questions during the service. There go my sister, Sidra. Sidra, I need to see you Sunday. Make your way to your sister's, to your sister's place, 2 o'clock on Sunday. Come on, family of faith. I need to see you. I want to see you. I would love to see you. I'm so glad that you trust them. I'm so glad that you love them. Just remember, go and tell somebody. Belithia, come back home, baby. We miss you. Go and tell somebody. Put away your sword. I love you guys. Have a great weekend. See you Monday.